Welcome to Now You Talkin', a new series of short videos on how to define key terms in the UTalk framework. Today, we're looking at the concept of the self. Now, like mind and behavior, the concept of the self is one of the most complicated constructs in psychology and philosophy. Consider that on the one hand, the self seems pretty obvious. I mean, here I am giving a lecture on the self. And yet, on the other hand, when we actually look to define what the self is, a lot of confusion and uncertainty can arise. Indeed, many individuals, such as James Garfield on recently on the Sam Harris podcast, argued that the entire self was really an illusion. Now, to understand that, we have to get behind what he means when he says the self. John Verbeke, Christopher Maestro Petro, and I uh, did an entire series, a 12-part series called The Elusive Eye, The Nature and Function of the Self. Each episode's about an hour and a half long, so obviously we'll only be able to get to the highlights of what the core definition of the self is today. But I do want to start off with this idea that there's a lot of ambiguity about what different people mean in relationship to the term. Let's start with what Garfield meant when he said the self is an illusion. I have this sense of a self. Hey, I decide, I own my body, I'm like in control of what's going on. And the easiest kind of way to think about it is though there's a little man inside my head that actually is deciding what's controlling my body. We see this in things like Disney's Inside Out, and we see it in ideas about the way the world works, like with the idea of a Christian soul, that God places this energy, capacity, um, supernatural ability inside of me, and that wakes me up, breathes life into me, and it is that essence which de defines me and allows me to control my body. Now, most in science think this is a, a not exactly the right picture. For obvious reasons, when you cut inside my head, you don't find a self, you find a brain. We also then see when we introspect that we really see experience, but it's actually hard. Certainly people like David Hume and many meditators and others said, well, where exactly is the self? The self also has all sorts of issues with continuity. Like, are you the same over time? Um, are there many different aspects of the self? I'll quote William James who said, properly speaking, a man has met as many social cells as there are individuals who recognize him and carry an idea of him in their head. And Roy Baumeister counters by, say, by saying, when the concept of the self loses its meaning, if a person has multiple cells, the essence of a self involves identity and continuity over time. So what we need to kind of consider, what are the different facets? Um, how do we understand the multiplicity at the same time unity? According to you talk, Although the common sense view of a little homunculus is wrong, it nevertheless is the case that we can identify the domain of self, or actually domains of self, in human self, the consciousness system. Specifically, Utah utilizes what's called the updated tripartite model to identify three different domains of self. There's an experiential self, an ego, and a persona. The next video will be on the ego persona, and today, for the remainder, I'm going to consolidate and clarify what is meant by the experiential self. So as the word suggests, there's actually two features to it. There's the experiential and the self. The experiential refers to the fact that when you are conscious, you have the experience of an, a witness function. That is, when you open your eyes and wake up, the world presents itself to you. This is one aspect of the experiential self, and it can orient us towards our pure awareness function of being in the world. Meditators focus on this aspect of the self. Then there's the experiential, uh, the self portion, and what the self portion is doing is it's grabbing what's relevant from the perceptions and then mapping and tracking and orienting that relevance. Now that's a little different than task relevance, and what John Verbeke, Christopher Maestro Petro, and I argued is that we can trace the development, the evolution of the self to understand why. The argument is this. As animals get increasingly complicated in their capacity to model the environment, they extend their paths of behavioral investment over time. For example, a rat at a choice point in a maze will envision itself going one way relative to another. Now, what's interesting about this when you simulate it is you realize the rat will be constant across the different environments. And here we start to get to why there would be a self-relevant uh, map that the animal is carrying around and becomes a key reference for itself in the world. This gets increasingly intense when we move into the social primate world. Indeed, when we're mapping ourselves in relationship to what others are doing and how others are perceiving us. 
The influence matrix argues that as primates, we have a fundamental sense of self in relationship to other in the world that we carry with us. That's a causing us to track our felt sense of relational value and social influence on the dimensions of power, love, and freedom. This is what we clinicians often identify as the core of the felt sense of self, or the felt sense of who am I, how do I really feel in the world. So, uh, to summarize, we, ha we do not have a little subject inside of our head that determines continuity exactly what we are and owns our body. Rather, what we have is a witness function and an experiential self, as well as an ego and persona to be described uh, forthcoming. What we see in the experiential self is the animal modeling itself in different uh, dimensions and carrying that reference forward so that serves as a core reference for the animal. Indeed, the default mode network it can be thought of as the process by which the animal is storing, especially in higher animals, storing what's relevant. It becomes increasingly relevant as we get social and we track ourselves in the self-other environment, specifically our felt sense of being seen, known, and valued in the world. Next, we'll talk about the unique aspects of the human self and our ego and our persona.